Hold on a second, I'm going where? Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. If I may be the first, I'd like to say welcome to Japan. This video is very special to me because I very recently onboarded to NAF Atsugi for the second time. And for the second time, I heard a lot of stories about people who got here and were too scared to get off base and go out there and experience this awesome country. And I feel like this is totally understandable because I was alone when I first arrived. I didn't speak any Japanese and I honestly hadn't traveled that much. So I was pretty terrified to leave the gate also. And the way that the area orientation brief that they give you tries to incentivize you to get outside of the gate is by showing you places that are at least a train ride and most of the time an entire bullet train or Shinkansen ride away. And it can already seem scary enough just to walk off base, let alone getting onto a train. So today I'm sharing with you all of my favorite things to do in the Atsugi area that are all within walking distance of base. These are all places that I started small with when I first got here and still enjoy visiting to this day. And I truly hope these recommendations help ease you into Japan, help get you acclimated, all that said, let's put on some comfy shoes because we are going for a walk. So I commute from Yokohama to get to work, and here I'm just taking my morning walk from the train station to base. Despite the heat this time of year, I love this walk because it wakes me up and gets my thoughts going for the workday, as well as giving me a chance to get some exercise in, which saves me a trip to the gym. For those interested in living off base without a car, the walk from Sagamino Station to my office should be about 40 minutes, but it almost never is because one of the kind MLCs I work with pulls over and picks me up every single day. Just a great example for anyone worried about working with different cultures, that the Japanese are incredibly kind and willing to help you adapt. Anyway, I'll see you guys after work. Ah, the Navy Gateway Inn and Suites. This was my home for months when I was here two years ago, and will likely be yours upon arrival as well as you quarantine and figure out your housing situation. If you have a choice between staying here and Navy Lodge, I'd recommend here because NGIS has a kitchen. Don't mind my zoom on this room, by the way. I'm just enjoying my walk down memory lane. NGIS is also great because it's right next to Navy Federal and the base thrift store, which has been offering a deal for quite some time now where you bring your own bag of any size and fill it for only $10. When I learned this, I suspected the store would be full of junk, but I've always been pleasantly surprised with the selection. They have plenty of children's clothing, as well as a great selection of legitimately nice coats and some professional wear. I would also say this spot is a great and convenient option to restock any dishes, mugs, or general kitchenware that may not have survived your PCS. But aside from the gym and theater you'll learn about in onboarding, that concludes my favorite spots on base. Time to step off into the great unknown. Sorry that was a little dramatic, but when I first got here, I was terrified to leave base in case I got lost. Another reason walking is so great is that it makes getting lost much harder and helps you get to know your local area step by step. When you leave through Main Gate, you pretty much have two options, left or straight. Today we're going straight to check out the local grocery. I love coming here because it was the first place I visited off base when I arrived, and I remember walking in and being hit with this wonderful sweet potato smell. But we're gonna ignore that for now, head upstairs, and feast on sushi because you shouldn't grocery shop hungry. It's the responsible thing to do. Now it's time for the grocery store. For those who aren't fans of raw fish, this place has all the dumplings and shrimp tempura your heart can desire. But regardless of what you like to eat, grocery stores in Japan are a form of entertainment in themselves. I love to just wander the aisles and look at the weird seafood and mystery snacks.
to the front part of the store. There's a few shelves filled with stuff perfect for playing. What are these things? I'd love to tell you this is a kid's game, but it's something I think is fun for anyone, and you basically just buy something unfamiliar to you that you can't predict the taste of. It's a great way to discover new foods, and another reason I consider the grocery store a great source of entertainment. Finally, on your way out of the store, there's The Little Mermaid, an incredible bakery I love to buy buns from and be surprised with what they are stuffed with. I highly recommend sampling a curry bun if you encounter one. And there you have it, my two favorite places to visit if I go straight. But hold on a second, what if we go left? I didn't get any footage of the walk left because I was once again picked up and escorted by a super kind coworker. But if you go left, you'll hit my favorite thrift store, Watman. This particular Watman truly has it all. It has a huge selection of clothing, shoes, jackets, home decor, musical instruments. Pretty much anything you need, they have a huge, well-kept selection of at a great price. This is another sentimental spot for me as it was also one of the first I visited here and I was so excited to return, I didn't even notice my shirt was annoyingly untucked in the back. Now it's time to head back to the station because I have some dogs to sit this weekend, but no walk out in town would be complete without a stop at 7-Eleven. Japanese 7-Eleven is on another level compared to the US. It's not only a reliable place for air conditioning, free Wi-Fi, and musical ATMs, but also legitimately one of my favorite places to eat. The food is much more delicious and healthy than in the States while staying super affordable, but be careful, it's kind of addicting. The last thing to point out for the walk is to always go through this park for a little peace and some welcome shade. Last week there was a guy playing the flute here to an audience of absolutely no one. But at this point, we're almost to Sagamino Station, which will be your jumping off point for those of you who are sufficiently oriented and ready to explore the bigger things. While I wish I could personally walk with you through your first trip to the grocery and get you your first PASMO card at the station like the person at my job before me did for me, I will instead leave you with some of his first advice. And that is that you don't need to know what you're doing or have an itinerary to enjoy Japan. All you need to do is just get on a train and start walking. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'll happily do my best to answer. And if you're curious about things further from base, I make plenty of videos about that as well. Hope to see you here next week. Bye. So today, so today I'm sharing with you, hope get you acclimated, get you excited. Oh God, why didn't I just say within the area of base? Hold on a second, I'm going where?